so DGI. I paid them on the 15th of January and it's now 24th of <coughs> January. Their website says that delivery or sorry shipment in uh, five to seven days so five to seven days we clearly passed that mark at this time uh, to me after reading this statement on their website and I'll be sending them emails like crazy trying to get a VAT itemized invoice so that I can add it to my bookkeeping and then when I get the invoice then I can do a per because I paid it with my own card and then I can make a claim uh, to my company and get the money back uh, because I have come up with an idea how it's going to be used. I mean everything uh, needs to be used for business and uh, I now know what is going to be the business usage. Or I, well, I knew it when I bought it but, but I need that. And I've just been getting these boiler pre boilerplate emails and uh, just non nonsical gibberish and today I th thought that oh man I need to get to the bottom of this this is taking way too long and I chatted with their agent today for I don't know 20 minutes or so and uh, he was trying to give me the runaround and saying that that statement was updated only five days ago onto the website and I can't remember it was but I wasn't going to argue about that uh, and so I said that okay so what you're saying that you're going to shaft your old customers in com in comparison to new customers uh, just to gain new customers that how do you think that makes me feel and and what is this and he then explained that yeah it's what do you call it the five to seven days it's actual uh, business days uh, and then he said that well your delivery date is on the 27th of January that's that's the shipment date that they have marked down and I was like okay then fine you're well all sorts of unpleasantness was exchanged and I was like you, you do understand it if you have a customer they might be slightly irate about your behavior well we left it at that and I said have a good day and by then I'll, I, I was kind of thinking that okay uh, I just need to wait for it but today after this heated, I cannot draw any other conclusion from this heated chat uh, with this operative or whatever support person it was that it actually did have an effect. Because now when I go to DGI's page, it says number one, order placed, number two, payment uh, reviewing. Number three, payment success. And number four, shipped. And previously it didn't really shipped. So now there's this dotted line where I'm, I'm at ship now. So, maybe I'll be seeing a drone. I don't even know what their delivery system is. If, if it's some horrible one, then it will take for ages it to arrive. But if it's an overnight service, it might be here tomorrow. Who knows? But yeah. 
I've been signing NDAs for open text. So now everybody from Sardion has signed an open text NDA. I'm hoping to see some business from them. Uh, I also looked in the LinkedIn, it has news about stuff, and uh, there was news about a guy called John Amelia. Uh, he was actually the guy, well, I'll tell you a story while I'm at it. Uh, I was working at theatre at the time, uh, as a bit over five years, and you know, I was. It seems like, like my life goes in five year cycles. I do five years of something and then I move on. The funny thing is, I've been now doing Sardion for seven years. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I put my details on Monster and I got a call from a recruiter called Janice Clark. She still does Documentum uh, or at least our company has gotten one assignment through her but what do you call it? The reputation is that she is fairly expensive I mean, the, the, co the percentage that, that she takes is extreme, so I, I like our situation now better. But anyway, Janice Clark called me. Hello, would you be interested in working for Documentum? Because I was looking for any content management stuff. And, or, sorry, yeah. At that time, EMC actually acquired Documentum and EMC happened to have an office in Finland and I was EMC's first ever employee uh, in Finland doing doc purely Documentum stuff. So, but the only thing was that my boss was in Sweden uh, and my job interview was in Sweden. And I had to, you know, this was for a normal person, you know, uh, working and supporting a family of, I don't know, was it three of us at the moment? Yeah, because maybe it, Sophia was already born. I don't know. It was all, either three or four. But anyway, to uh, actually book tickets and fly to Stockholm to a job interview, pay everything. Uh, I mean, now, yeah, I have that kind of money to move, move myself up. I could do that easier. But then, when I was just doing it on a, yeah, we'll pay you back. And let's say, if I would have known how long that would take them to pay me back, <laughs> maybe I would have, maybe I would have considered a couple of times but Janice Clark then says that would you like to work for what do you call it Documentum or EMC as it was at the moment because they have an office in Finland but yeah absolutely and I fl fl flew to Sweden and John Amelia who just now I read from the news he resigned from Documentum. There's been a slew, I don't know if you say it like that, a plethora of managers just exiting Documentum when they're moving to, uh, when the product is moving to open text. And I don't know whether that is a good thing or a bad thing. It might be a very bad thing, but it might be, you know, 
irrelevant, but I, you never know. But anyway, I had a uh, kind of this business type of a uh, interview with John Amelia, and then after that came my previous manager uh, who interviewed me and for some reason I'd been spending my spare time and I'd written a plugin into Eclipse so it was a documentum specific plugin that you could do queries and when you wrote your API scripts it would color code it and it would give you pr content proposals so it, it was you know a nice tool. I've actually had people get up from their seat and come and shake my hand because of that product uh, because it's it's free it's it doesn't cost but it's 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 decade old it's over a decade old but anyway when I had this technical portion of the interview my old former boss he started talking and I had a bunch of paper with the you know technical or introduction to the plugin and I just float that on the table and said this is what I do <laughs> and it kind of knocked the wind out of him and we didn't have any more technical uh, questions uh, truth of the matter it doesn't didn't prove anything I just uh, you know I had, I had a hobby I did a plugin Mm. and they uh, flew back to Finland they, it took them a couple of I can't remember fairly short period and then they said yeah you're hired and then what do you call it I we now drive the same car as I have a partiality for a Volvo V50 uh, four-wheel drive uh, Or oh, let's turn that off. Uh, because that was my first ever proper car. And so basically when I went to work there, they, well, basically in the first interview, I asked, what do you want? These are the benefits we offer. And then when I went to uh, EMC Lautasari, they had an office at Lautasari at the time. It's now taken down. It's been demolished. Maybe I had a picture on one of these videos about it being taken down. It bring, brings a weird feeling for a part of your history has been <laughs> thrown away. But anyway, they said, yeah, uh, we understand that the policy for EMC is to buy a car beneath 50,000 euros uh, but we have been cre <laughs> we're we're creative here and we considered it to be VAT zero so go find yourself a car uh, with under 50,000 VAT zero so you can get a well, at that stage, I got this Volvo V50 with absolutely everything in it. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I love that car. I love our, I, I, I was, when I was sitting in that car, I was saying, thank you, Jesus, for giving me this vehicle. I appreciate this tremendously much. And then when I got this, I bought this V50 for myself from when I was working at Sardion again. I was amazed. Thank you, Lord, that you've blessed me with this wonderful equipment that I can rely on, that it will take me to, from place A to B. And then this latest, this Beamer. Uh, um, also, I'm um, flabbergasted. What am I, a boy from Kontula, who in his own mind was determined to be a construction worker or maybe a criminal I don't know but some but but the friends I kept uh, at that time they were just 
uh, some of them are murderers. We call him, uh, the, well there's two guys who, one is Kirurgi Kontila, who used a knife, and then there's my, yeah, well let's go, not go too far into that, but he had a 38 on him and he took it in a bus and the story goes like this that you know the bun be benches in the bus and i think it, the guy's name was mikke or mikke and he said mutka. let me see that piece and he took it out and then for some reason it, it hit the back of the the bus bench and it shot the guy in the head and he died in the bus so what i'm saying I was headed to a different direction, but luckily then a, f a friend at that time called Lily, she suggested that maybe, maybe, maybe you should go to school and, and, and she actually got my first interview into an IT company called Remtec, uh, where a guy called Risto Sundquist was working. Uh, and I, they did, uh, they did a elevator maintenance program for Kone, which is one of the biggest elevator and escalator companies there is. Uh, Schindler, I think, is one of them, and Kone is one, and then there's a couple of others, but these are the big, big ones. So I got an IT job when I was in school. So first I went to school and then I got this, it wasn't even an IT job, it was kind of more of a consultant thing where I just investigated how do you do your work. I had a piece of paper and I travelled with this maintenance guy and wrote everything down and created a report and uh, apparently they were, they were satisfied with the report. They, they gave me more money than I I think it was 50, 50 euros an hour or something like that. No, 50, I can't remember. But it was, at the time it was masses and I was walked out of that, <laughs> jaw dropped. But anyway, Risto Sundqvist then went to work for Tieto Enator Technology, which was a subside, subsidiary of Tieto which is a very small company and they had just brought Documentum into Finland and uh, I have now seen online, when now Documentum has been dissolved into open text, I've seen these people when they've posted these things that they have had from Documentum for ages. I got as a signing bonus, I got a watch that said Documentum on it with a leather strap. The only problem is the thing doesn't keep time. Uh, but it must be somewhere lying around. And yeah, that would be. But anyway, the story began. I saw John Amelia has left Documentum. In this interview in Sweden, John Amelia was the guy who interviewed me. Yeah, that was the main point of the story but John after he had a skyrocketing career he was first my boss's manager so boss of Nordics and or, or was it England and Nordics and then PJ or my my boss was beneath him and then I got hired but he then he just skyrocketed in a matter of five six years into being the worldwide consulting head of consulting worldwide some kind of vice president or something like that weird but anyway complaining to companies like dgi they by the way have their operations in china so everything is shipped from china so mm, my feeling is that they operate slightly differently and they're not as responsive as you would expect. But hey, hopefully I get my 
new toy soon. And I'm really praying what will what will happen to us in our company next? And what will God open? Which door will God open? Because I can see about two months from now, and then I don't see. Well, where is Miss Lady? My glee for Mavic doing the right thing, it was uh, premature because now that I again contacted them and asked what's the deal with the delivery uh, and uh, where's my tracking number? And the only answer they could say me, yeah, U UBS or U uh, you know, parcel, parcel services. UPS is picking it up. And uh, that was an absolute bullshit answer. Because UPS, for big vendors like that, they pick them up daily. And when you set your order to be shipped then yeah so I'm not expecting it anytime soon and I must admit I got I feel like I was shafted by DGI but hey uh, would oh well, no I didn't even expect anything from them or yeah I I had a different perception of of them uh, judging by the material I, I saw of them so gaining in speed cycling so what do you call it it was minus five throughout the day I noticed that now my hands aren't so sore but the coldness has moved into my arms they're freezing and uh, my average speed has gone up even in these winter conditions I'm uh, doing nearly 18 kilometers an hour 17.5 six seven and depending on the route so an improvement there slightly gutted by DGI and what else yeah I was thinking about it how do I describe my condition now nowadays is that I I don't feel Mm. I get fatigued if I do some very trivial uh, if I sit down nothing happens I'm fine all day but if I do shopping is I think the best example if I walk slowly very slowly from place to place and I kind of need to pick up stuff and look at uh, you know study something sta stationary, stand, move a bit, you know, at your stores. Uh, I think that is the, the worst for me. I feel absolutely horrible after a typical shopping trip. Uh, but exercising, cycling, no problem I can do that no problem and um, and yeah so that's what makes me feel bad the other thing is how or what do I uh, where do I feel it the most is when I'm working and 
there, there are these long corridors and I don't know if you've ever been, you know, you're in a situation where you're not supposed to be drunk, but your, your steps are slightly, ever so, so slightly, they're shifting a bit. And I think that's, that would best describe my condition where you, you're in a situation where you don't want anybody else to see that you have issues with your balance. I have, you know, obviously I haven't drank anything at work, but the thing is I, I still, I have these. Taking corners is the worst and yesterday was uh, a bad day compared to today. Uh, but yeah, it's, MS is a gift that keeps on giving, but in the sense that your symptoms go on and off and there's really not much that you can... I, I know that food has something to do with it, but still these slight variations, I have no clue where, why they happen and what's going on. Because I eat the same, tend to do pretty much the same stuff, but still one day it's clearly better than the other. And that's fairly frustrating. If I would find a, a good kind of do this, do these things, because I'm capable of doing that. I've dropped coffee, I've dropped saturated fat, I've dropped milk, dropped cream, dropped candy, or chocolate, uh, pretty much everything, except for salad and uh, rice-based food. And uh, I do risottos now, veg you know, with vegetables and small mackerels or smoked uh, herring and, and stuff like that. Uh, basically, I, I, I have completely switched what I eat. I've given up coffee. I don't drink coffee and I drink green tea because somebody says that it's good for you. Uh, and yes, I do feel better with drinking, but it doesn't, it tastes like, I don't particularly like the taste of green tea. And today I saw on TV, somebody was drinking a, uh, a cappuccino or a latte. And yes, I would love to make a cup of latte for myself, but I cho choose not to because there's a potential risk that that will make me feel better, worse. So if I would have, what I'm trying to prove or say is I have proven to myself that I have the capability of actually doing radical modifications to my diet completely turning away from stuff that I previously thought that were, my, it were, were at the core of my being. Uh, steaks and cooked stuff and cream and butter and all that. I've just, no, I won't have those. So if I had only discover that, by the way, these are the things that you need to avoid in order to keep yourself healthy. I would do it at heartbeat, drop of a hat, no question about it. But I haven't discovered it yet. I don't know why. My condition is what it is. It's just, it's depressing. Yesterday I was maybe the more than usual kind of feeling the effects of this. And uh, yeah, it, it gives you this roller coaster ride of emotions that one day I'm trusting God, everything's gonna be fine. And then the next, or not even, even fine, but I'll get through this with the help of God. 
But then the other day I'm kind of panicking and thinking that everything's going down the drain because of this in different situations in the world. But anyway, this is getting to be long, so I'll compile it and say, Jesus is King. Amen.